Hey, welcome to Leading Together. I'm Bruce Waller and I'm excited to introduce leaders leading and making a difference in the workplace and community. And today I wanna to introduce a good friend of mine, Kevin Dawson. Kevin is the host and founder of Leaders and Loggers podcast. He's a consultant for Gallagher and president of the Permian Basin Sherm chapter. And if that's not enough, He's also the chairman for the West Texas HR Symposium that's going to be held later this year in Lubbock, Texas. So, uh, Kevin, thanks for jumping on with me today. Hey, Bruce. Yeah, I'm glad to be here. Hey, now, you're in West Texas. Is, is that where you're born? Where do you live at? So, I'm in Midland. I'm born and raised here in Midland. So, if people don't know where Midland is... Um, you know, pull out your map of Texas, find Fort Worth, find El Paso, draw a straight line and mark the middle, and you find Midland. <laughs> I love it. And I've been there and I, I, I love the people in Midland. Now, uh, I see you're a consultant for Gallagher and yes. many people don't actually know what a consultant is. Can you just share a little bit about uh, what consulting is and it, did you get a degree for that or did you just get started that or how did, how did that work out? So, uh, so I came to Gallagher as a, as a consultant in 2016. Uh, my background is actually in organizational management and aerospace science. Mm -hmm. Now, I didn't uh, fall into the consulting world right away. Um, my original career path um, ambitions were to uh, be a pilot. Um, I wanted to be a fighter pilot. And when that didn't come through, I was going to be an airline pilot. When that didn't fall through, um, I became an educator um, working in nonprofits and then worked in marketing for a small oil and gas firm. And then during the last downturn um, with oil prices um, actually a little bit higher than where they are right now, um, got laid off from that company and my dad had his own um, agency. Uh, doing health and welfare benefits that uh, was acquired by Gallagher in 2013. So he hired me onto his team um, as a health and welfare benefits. And then as um, I've worked there um, for the last four years, I've, I've moved more into an HR and benefits consulting role. So as a consultant, my job is to go out and work with organizations, um, figure out what their issues are um, and kind of help them find what what the issues are sometimes they're not as prevalent as um as they think so we it's a, a series of just um fact finding pro and and pulling out and asking questions of what's going on what their goals are what their struggles and then analyzing the situation and then as a consultant be able to provide to them resources to fit those needs whether that means we work with them on developing a total rewards package so your your health and welfare benefits your leave policies your your compensation um, retirement or we work with them on technology leadership development um you know welfare or, or well-being initiatives so we we have a lot of resources and so kind of way i described i'm i'm the quarterback of of a big team that walks in and each person on the team has different um, strengths and my job is to get the ball into the right person's hands for whatever that organization needs. I love that analogy. You're, you're basically <laughs> assessing, you're a coach. Um, I, I love that. Now, you, now consulting is just part of what you do. Uh, it is. I had the honor of being on your Leaders and Loggers podcast in Washington, D.C. earlier this year. And, and so you've done a wonderful job uh, with doing that. So setting up the Leaguers and Loggers podcast, I mean, how did you know, number one, that you wanted to do that? Uh, how did you get started with that? And then number two, have you found your lane uh, uh, being the host of that? Uh, I mean, it's, it's really taken off. So let me start with, with the second part because it leads into the first part. So, okay. um, so finding my lane, you know, because I didn't end up where I, thought I wanted to be, you know, having a background in aerospace science, getting a commercial pilot's license, um, you know, giving up uh, a career that I had dreamed for a long time. Growing up, I always wanted to be a fighter pilot. My, my long 
lifetime goal growing up, I wanted to be the commander leader of the Air Force Air Demonstration Squadron, the Thunderbirds. And so, you know, my goal was to go to the Air Force Academy um, and then track my way up um, the ranks to, to get to where I wanted to go. And that didn't um, happen for me. I did get an appointment to the Academy, but I had to give that up um, due to some, some personal life choices um, that resulted in, in some changes. But I, I still continued to work in that goal. And when life just kind of said, no, that's not the, the path for you, uh, along the way, I've recently discovered that what I've been developed into and what really my, my passion, my calling is, is to help develop leaders and teams. And so um, right before I launched the Leaders and Loggers podcast, I, I wrote um, this article on LinkedIn um, that I titled, Wake Up From Your Dream and Live Out Your Purpose. Because mm. for me, it was finally waking up from you know, from these dreams and saying, you know, I'm actually living out what my purpose is. And I think for a lot of, of people and leaders, we had these big ambitions, these big dreams, but sometimes we get so caught up on the dream part that we miss out on actually waking up and living out what we need to be doing right now. And so and as I kind of gave myself an assessment, looking back, over the course of my career, I've been in these roles where I have helped develop, you know, young leaders, helped develop teams, helped create programs that, you know, energize and build um, strengths of people, starting with, you know, a, a, the couple of nonprofits that I worked in um, where I was in the education side. And then moving into oil and gas and marketing, I was helping to develop cultures of safety for the, the clients that we worked with. And then finally moving to Gallagher and saying, hey, you know, a lot of these pieces that the organizations that we work with need help most, and I think would solve majority of the issues is they just need to find ways to develop their leaders, their managers, and build good culture. And so uh, one of the things that kind of helped really identify that piece for me, I took the um, standout assessment from the Marcus Buckingham company. Um, oh, right. Yes. And, and so um, I, I had taken the, the Gallup Strengths Finder assessment, um, you know, a few years back and, you know, it gives you your top five strengths and, and Marcus Buckingham was one of the people who was involved in that project with Dr. Don Clifton. And so, you know, when he released the standout assessment in 2017, um, I, I was somewhat familiar with what that assessment was. And so in order to kind of continue to discover my own strengths, I took that assessment and it showed that my top strength was as a teacher. Um, far cry from a fighter pilot. <laughs> and, uh, and, and at that moment, I realized, okay, so all this time I have been developing and, and working towards helping to teach and lead. And so out of that um, came the idea of launching the podcast. I'm not much of a writer, um, mainly because I don't like writing. Uh, <laughs> I, I feel like I, when I do write, it's very intentional, but I don't like to do it. And so uh, doing a blog um, was not really in, the, the cards for me, because I don't think I could have kept up with it as much as I could with launching a podcast and mm -hmm. having a background um, also in audio, video technology um, and, and serving in those roles with uh, the churches that I've been a part of. So I had a little bit of technical experience. Okay, you know what, I've got, I know what I need uh, equipment wise and uh, software wise to, to do recording. And so the idea was, okay, let's talk about leadership development, organizational culture, um, how it affects business technology. And then I wanted to create a little bit of a personal spin um, and, and have that unique hook to get, you know, people interested in, and for my own personal hook came the, the, the craft beer, hence the lager piece. And so 
the idea of leaders and loggers came about and and so it's been we've been recording every week um since november 1st this week is we're gonna record our 25th episode and um so you know we've and then the following week so it will be week 26 which would be you know half a year of of episodes and so each week um it's a different, if it's just me on the podcast, and I don't have a guest, you know, it's, it's two or three topics um, on, on leadership development, organizational culture. And then we start off each show with a craft beer review. So it's something new to me every time. So it's, you know, always trying something new. And, and then also because there's so many independent craft brewers across the country um, and each one has their own unique culture and it's it's kind of a way to to showcase what these these brewers are doing um in some of these beers actually have some unique, really neat histories or names that come about from them and uh so it, it i get to tap into that network tap into you know the leadership network and uh and so right now we're we're averaging close to 200 to 300 um oh, wow. weekly weekly listeners um, the certain guests uh, appearances, you know, spike spike those um, numbers. I think the highest I've had was uh, close to 500 listeners um, a few weeks ago. I got to have one of my oldest friends um, join me uh, right after she got back from from being on a six month cruise, um, leading teams in the South Pacific on a on a cruise ship um, in the performance side. So, um, and this week I'm really excited. I've got another friend um, who's going to be joining me who uh, was a, is a recording artist and an entrepreneur, former small business owner, um, and was a contestant on NBC's The Voice this last season and was on uh, John Legend's team. Oh, wow. Wow. So, so we're well, going to talk, ab talk about just, you know, his, his experience in getting coached by someone like John Legend um the the whole creative process what it's like to to be a small business owner and leader um and then what future projects that he's got coming up well i mean uh what what a cool experience that is i mean that's what this show is here it's about leading together it's about learning from each other and trying to just uh create inspiration uh to help each other win i love what you're talking about developing leaders uh, i definitely think that's definitely part of your dna and uh, I see that because you're also very involved in your local Sherm chapter. I know mm -hmm. that, uh, I heard, I've heard Steve Brown, I heard many people talk about the importance of having associations away from work, people that you can talk to. And it's all about a sense of belonging. So I'm wondering if you could just share uh, for a few minutes, what led you to be involved with a PB Sherm, Permian Basin Sherm, and what, what's that experience been like? So I got involved with Permian Basin Sure about three, three and a half years ago. So when I first came on board to Gallagher, I was trying to find uh, a network um, uh, of people that we worked with. So we predominantly work with HR professionals, CFOs, CEOs. And uh, so I was just, you know, Google search, you know, what are, what are the, the networks or associations with that? And Permian Basin Sherm was one of the first ones to pop up. They were getting ready to host their annual conference um, here in Midland. And so I reached out and I said, hey, I'd love to, to attend. If there's an opportunity, maybe we could sponsor a piece of it. Um, and so I, I went and the incoming uh, chapter president, um, uh, that year was actually a former coworker of mine um, from my very first um, full-time job working for the American Air Power Heritage Museum. And so having that connection, I was like, okay, hey, what's, what's going on? And I want to know more. And as I started attending a monthly meetings, she said, hey, you've got a lot of experience with marketing and helping get the word out would, you know, we don't really have anybody who's doing that for our chapter. Would you mind being our marketing person? Sure. Love to. And, you know, at the time uh, that we, that I got involved uh, with Permian Basin Sherm, we had about 60 um, active members, uh, a typical monthly lunch. We would have 20 to 30 
attendees. So I got in there. I um, started looking at what type of outreach chapter was doing to get the word out to uh, local officials. Um, Cause uh, you know, for a, a community of, you know, about 350, 360,000 people to only have 60 HR professionals involved seemed pretty low um, for our population. And so I just started, you know, I, I retooled our, our website, our social media pages. Um, so we launched a, a new Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, new website, and really leveraged LinkedIn as a huge resource. Um, and I just started connecting with as many HR professionals as I could um, within the Midland Odessa area. We started to um, look for, um, you know, quality um, speakers for our, our luncheons that we could get um, for, for little to no cost. That way we could, you know, keep our costs down to invest into marketing and outreach um, to grow the resources that we needed. And that then turned into um, us growing rather quickly. And then uh, I was asked um, to be the president elect um, two years ago. And, and at the time I was enrolled within a, a program that Gallagher um, has to develop um, new talent within the organization. And so I knew that, uh, that was going to take a, a big toll um, on me the year that I was actually going to officially be president, which would have been last year. And so we changed the bylaws to make it to two year terms um, from board members just so we could have some um, a, a solid foundation because we, we, we didn't have a full board at the time that I, I got involved. Um, but uh, we, we grew quickly. Um, in fact, we just hit 200 active members this month, uh, which is a huge, huge deal uh, for, for me um, to get to that point. And, uh, and so it's been, been a great resource. Um, we're, we're now each month um, averaging 60 um, attendees and are coming out with new programs to reach all of the different levels of HR professionals. So those that are brand new, you know, we've got people who were doing HR essentials, um, you know, so someone who's never had any real true experience, what's a crash course in HR look like for those who were, you know, studying for the SHRM exams. Um, we've got the test prep exams. Um, we do those twice a year. We've been working on networking programs. We've got a young professionals group um, that, is, that is starting to develop. And we've been working with the local universities um, and community colleges to launch a student chapter been a little slower because we don't have a true HR degree program um, at any of them, but we have a lot of management programs. So we're just trying to encourage the, those students in, the, in those programs to come anyways so that way they can learn people management skills, not necessarily have to be an HR person, but how do you manage people and, and do that well? And so we've been quite successful at um, – getting some of these programs going. I've got a full board um, that, you know, I can finally turn over um, <laughs> control of certain areas and, and be more strategic and not as hands-on with some of the day-to-day -day, um, pieces. Yeah, I, I, I love that. And I've seen the growth. And so what I like what you said about that is, is that you just didn't come in and just start doing things. You really took it took it from a strategic approach start assessing the situation trying to figure out how can we reach uh the right people mm -hmm. the organization and you did that and most of these ways it really was just an investment of your time uh, when you're talking about social media when you're talking about linkedin these campaigns ownership uh, one one question i have is you know during this this time of this COVID-19, this virus going on where people are having to really, you know, stay at home and, and not get together. Uh, how is Permian Basin Sherm? What are you doing to really bring people together? I once heard George W. Bush share a quote that says, leaders bring people together. But when people are scattered and they're working remotely, how do you keep them engaged? So what's maybe one, one thing that uh, PB Sherm is, is doing or, or talking about doing to keep everybody engaged during this time? Well, so there's so many 
um, resources coming out from SHRM nationally, larger chapters across the country um, that, you know, we don't have the resources um, at the moment to utilize. So we're just saying, hey, for those that, uh, you know, we, while we can't meet in person, we don't all have the, the technology to, to host webinar-based um, programs, we're, we're relying a little bit on all of these other chapters and, or, or SHRM or other events that we see that, hey, here's a free resource, here's what you can do to be connected. So it's just, you know, sharing of information. Um, you know, for me, I've, I've tried to go through and, and contact um, as many of our members as possible, just, just to check in and see, how are you? What can we, you know, what, is there anything that, that you just need um, that, you know, whether it's just, do you, do you need a therapist at the moment, just someone to talk to? And, you know, life is, is tough because, you know, where we are in the Permian Basin, it's not just COVID-19, it's oil and gas being you know, decimated. Yeah. And, and so there's a lot of, of layoffs going on um, from both sides. So if it feels like, you know, we're, we're getting hit uh, on two sides and it's, it's created a lot of, of anxiety for a lot of people. And, and so if, if I can be just a resource for someone to just, I need someone to talk to and, and they just, you know, and I can just sit there and listen. Um, you know, and that's all that, <laughs> that they need. Or if, hey, uh, you know, I, I can't get out to the stores. Can someone, you know, go get me some toilet paper or something, you know, uh, just, just to, to be a resource or whatever, you know, whatever need that, I, that can be available to people. Yeah, I know. I love that. And, I, and that's one thing I appreciate about what Sherm has done with their, uh, their media presence and the resources they're sending out is they're saying, hey, look, you don't have to do everything yourself. We'll help you. We're in this together. Uh, we're leading together. And just being able to share those resources uh, goes a long way. So you're, you're, man, you're balancing a lot. Like you have a lot of responsibilities. I know that's a challenge. And I was curious if you could, just with the, with the uh, audience, if you could just share uh, maybe a daily discipline that helps just keep you on track. I mean, are you an early morning riser? Are there a couple things that you do every day that you that are routine that help you just stay on track? Uh, sh share that with us. So right now, just when we we all transition to working from home, this is kind of the, really the first time that I've worked from home. I've I've had the ability to to work really remotely, even though I've got an office. Um, and, and have done a lot of traveling and, and things along those lines. So for me, this is really different. Uh, so it was, you know, trying to adjust to a new schedule. So kind of what we tried to do um, in, in our house here was to kind of come up with a schedule. We had breakfast, we had morning chores. Um, you know, we knew at lunch that, you know, we're going to do lunch from 12 to 1 because we've been um, watching old uh, reruns of the A-Team TV series. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and then, you know, from, from about one to, to three, we're, you know, real intentional to, to work um, and, and get, you know, emails or, or make phone calls or do whatever needs to be done. And then kind of a, a mid afternoon break um, and then work until about five, five thirty. 30, um, take the dog for a walk, um, eat dinner, oh. You know, I, where I've got my office um, set up here is in my dining room. And um, just so I don't get caught up, I think a lot of people um, get caught up just constantly working when they're from home. Um, mm -hmm. Gallup released a, a, a study that showed that the people who work from home typically work uh, one, I think it was like 1.8 hours longer than a mm. typical workday um, mm. because they don't know when to to, to, to leave it because it's right there to go and do. And so I've had to really just, okay, turn the lights off, walk away, um, or I get caught up. And I think the longer you, you work at, you know, things like that, it, it, eats, it takes away from family time. It takes away from personal development time um, and just creates more stress. And so I've had to be very intentional of, of okay, I'm done. I'm not going to do anything else for today. It's, it's going to just be there tomorrow um, and not worry about it. Um, so that's kind of been what we've been doing um, in the house. 
Yeah, I heard Urban Meyer once share. He's the former football coach of Ohio State and uh, Florida. And he mm -hmm. says that uh, good leaders have a plan, great leaders have a system. Yep. They are consistent at doing the same thing every day. I, I have a system as well. I'm, a, I'm an early riser. Uh, but I do find myself from time to time being, my mind's trying to pull me to do something, you know, versus going through the process. And so I just try to, I try to stay with that. But I always love learning from others that, um, you know, have, have a system in place and you just never know if you can, you know, pick up something uh, to use for your own. I'm always, always curious about trying new things. And I think that's okay. As long as you have a system in place and from time to time, like uh, recently I started uh, running <laughs> past. I haven't been doing that. So uh, that's something new. So we'll, we'll see. But uh, anyway, well, I've, I appreciate that. I know that uh, I wanted to uh, real quick also ask just real quick about this West Texas HR symposium. I mean, how do you have time for that? You're the chairman of this so, conference. Share just a little bit about this uh, conference coming up in August. So this is our second year of the West Texas HR symposium. It grew out of the idea um, of, of reaching the greater West Texas um, HR community. So okay. that's Amarillo, Lubbock, San Angelo, even El Paso, because, you know, being in, in Texas, Sherman is very unique because we're so geographically spread out. Um, and with the state conference um, at HR Southwest North, while it's a, a fantastic event for a lot of people in West Texas, it's too far, it's too long, or it's too, too expensive. And so we wanted to create a, an event that was a little bit more regional, um, a little bit more cost effective, um, but still at the same level of, of um, quality, you know, same quality of speakers and things that you would see at a, at a major event like HR Southwest. And so I kind of modeled this to be what I like to call HR Southwest West. <laughs> <laughs> and so the four West Texas uh, SHRM chapters, uh, last year we partnered with Texas Workforce Commission to launch this two-day event. Um, and, uh, and so it's come back this year. Uh, we, we did have to postpone it um, from May to August just because of all the, the social distancing guidelines that are in place. And we want to make sure everybody comes safe and healthy. Um, but this year, it'll be August 20th and 21st um, in Lubbock. We've got three fantastic keynote speakers. Uh, Tony Bridwell, um, who's a chief people officer at Ryan, fantastic author, also a podcast host. You and I both have been on his podcast. And, um, and so Tony's going to come and talk about leadership um, with his, his newest book, um, Saturday Morning Tea. I've got... Kirby Hope, the athletic director at Texas Tech, coming to speak um, in, as a big Texas Tech fan. Um, I'm really excited about having Kirby, but just watching what Kirby has done in developing the athletic department at Texas Tech the last several years and bringing in some really relatively unknown names to lead the programs um, within the athletic department and then turn around and see those people really thrive. Um, with what, I mean, the fact that, you know, the basketball team last year made it to the national championship game and we're literally just minutes away from winning um, for, for, you know, a, a head coach in his God. third year. And, uh, and so, and then you've got, you know, the baseball team that has gone to, you know, multiple college world series um, in the last several years, you've got um, a, a a soccer team that you know, on the the women's soccer team that's just done well, and so he's he's developed these these leaders of of these other teams, and has entrusted them to succeed, and they're doing so without the budgets of places like Texas A and M, UT, Oklahoma, that are you know almost double than what Tech has, and so I think for a lot of people, it's it's learning how to lead and lead well, even when you have limited resources, you can do it. So I think his story, um, plus he, he played football at Kansas State under Coach Bill Snyder, who is a legend in his own right. Um, and so he'll be coming to speak. And then Jimmy Taylor, who is our Texas Sherm director-elect, um, will be coming to speak as well. So those are our keynote speakers. And then we'll have a day and a half of breakout sessions where we focus on the HR department of one, 
the future of HR and attracting and retaining the next generation workforce. Um, so we've got, we've got a ton of fantastic um, breakout sessions. Um, we've even got, a, 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 um, we're going to have a, what we're calling Shrum at Sunset for our student organization, um, which will be a, a panel um, style event for just our, our Sherm student chapters uh, to come and attend and, and interact with Texas Sherm leaders. Um, and, and then we're going to have a, a Thursday night mixer. Um, in fact, uh, the guest, um, our, our, per, our performer or uh, for that event is actually going to be on Leaders and Loggers podcast with me this week. Um, so he's going to come and perform um, up there. And uh, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be fantastic. Uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. We've already got uh, about 140 um, registrations. Um, and, uh, and so there'll be, um, you know, I'm, Hoping to see more. I know for a lot of organizations, you know, budgets are kind of tight at the moment. But um, yeah, I feel like for what all the different things that we've got going on for the the cost. Um, if you're a Texas Sherm sure member, it's 150 bucks. If you're a Sherm sure member but not plugged into a Texas Sherm sure chapter, it's 175. And if you're just an HR professional or just want to come and attend, it's 200 bucks. Um, and you, you know, it's two days you get, if you have, you know, SHRM or HRCI certifications, you can earn 12 um, PDCs at the conference. Um, but for those who are registered currently, we're going to actually launch um, over the course uh, of the next couple of months, a webinar series. Um, because we, with shifting the dates, we did lose a couple of our breakout session speakers, but we still wanted them to be engaged. So we've reached out to them and asked if they would um, do a webinar. And so our very first webinar will be on May 7th, which was when the symposium was originally to kick off. But we have Rodney Klein from the EEOC, um, who's going to be doing um, kind of uh, an overview of EEOC for the HR Department of One. That is absolutely fantastic. It, it, you, you're right. It's a small investment for a big return. I always tell people, if you can't bet on yourself, Who's going to bet on you? So, and by the way, you hit the lottery uh, when it came to keynote speakers for 2020. Tony Bridwell, um, obviously uh, the athletic director from Texas Tech and the state uh, as, as, uh, assistant director uh, at uh, Texas Sherm, Jimmy Taylor. I mean, that's fantastic. Uh, so, yeah, it's going to be a great lineup. And then 2021, you, you'll have to be at the symposium to find out. Um, who we've got for 2021, but it's even bigger and better than this year. That's what I like about you, Kevin. You just keep making things bigger and better. Hey, let's wrap it up with the three fun fact questions. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so uh, tell us your favorite book or your favorite podcast. Well, uh, I would have to say my favorite podcast would be the Leaders and Loggers podcast. But, but uh you know, I really do like the HBR Idea Cast, so from the Harvard Business Review. Um, they're 30 minutes to an hour long podcast um, with a whole bunch of leaders on many different topics. Um, that's probably one I listen to the most um, outside, you know, for, for just, you know, personal development and listening. Um, and then book wise, probably my favorite book of all time is uh, Highest Duty by uh, Captain uh, Sullenberger. Oh, yes. And, uh, you know, for those who don't know who Captain Sullenberger is, he is the um, captain from the Miracle on the Hudson. Um, Sully. Yep. Yep. So fantastic book. That's, that, that's fantastic. Love it. Love it. Uh, you got a favorite quote or a saying that you use? So one, uh, probably my favorite quote is negative Ghost Rider. The pattern is full. <laughs> <laughs> so uh use that one quite a bit um from top gun but uh growing up one of the uh programs i was involved with in, in trying to get my career going towards the air force um what we had this print on the back of our, our t-shirts for for our jrotc program here and it's not the size of the dog in the fight it's the size of the fight and the mm -hmm. dog nice uh, and so um always have uh, remembered that one um, and, uh, so nice. Tell us one thing that you've recently learned or maybe a hobby you took back up since the, uh, since the virus, since you've been working from home, anything new? 
Well, uh, so it really, I'm, I'm really kind of working on, um, I wouldn't say nothing new. I, I'm, I've been, I've been studying quite often um, for the Sherm CP exam, which I'm taking Ooh. in June. And so that's kind of been, been my hobby, I guess, for the last couple of weeks. <laughs> yes, it becomes a hobby. There's no question about that. Oh, man, yeah. perfect timing for that, right? Yeah, so, um, so I've been studying pretty hard. I actually took a, a, a practice exam last night and scored with an 85 on it. It's fantastic. So I'm doing, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm making good progress. You're going to do great. I can't wait to hear you uh, tell me when you pass. Hey, uh, let me ask you this uh, question. Uh, how can uh, the viewers – find you? How can they connect with you? How can they learn more about Kevin Dawson and Leaders and Loggers podcast as well as the conference? So the podcast, we've I just um, taking advantage of this, this downtime. Um, we've retooled the, the website. So you can go to leadersandloggers.com, um, which will have information on all of the new episodes. Um, it has some of the speaking topics that um, I speak on, has some information about um, myself on there, but people can connect with me on LinkedIn, on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. I've got both my, my personal um, pages for myself and then Leaders and Loggers has pages um, on, on all of those as well. Um, or, and, and if you, you know, podcast, the, the podcast is on uh, Apple Podcasts, Google, iHeartRadio, Spotify, um, and uh, and so the you have to search as leaders and loggers um, for there, and then you know just search Kevin Dawson, um, Permian Basin Sherm, and you, or or West Texas HR Symposium. Um, and speaking of the symposium, then go to West Texas HR Symposium dot com, um, and you know see all the information about our keynote speakers, our breakout sessions, the different vendors and sponsors that we have. And we'd still have plenty of room for additional. Um, vendors and sponsors we still have plenty of room for attendees um, you know we've got 140 registrations but we um, the, the venue will hold a 500 so and we still got plenty of room to get there I and mean, last year we had 425 total attendees um, so you, you can learn more about West Texas HR Symposium there or you can find us on on LinkedIn Facebook Twitter no Instagram though <laughs> Kevin, I appreciate you being on Leading Together and just really just sharing your perspective to help others in their career, my friend. I appreciate it.